Lesson Objective 6.3e states multiply and divide positive rational numbers fluently. Positive rational numbers are defined as the set of numbers that can be expressed as a fraction a over b where a and b are whole numbers and b cannot equal zero. So in basic terms what we're saying here is a positive rational number is any number that can be made into a fraction where you have a, both a positive number in the numerator and a positive number in the denominator, as long as you don't let the denominator equal zero, because we can't have a fraction with the zero in the denominator. If you think about it, that should make sense. Since fractions are nothing but division problems, you can't have a number divided by zero, because there's no number times zero that would ever get you to that numerator. Okay? Um, so... Positive rational numbers can include the subsets of whole numbers and counting numbers, because those can be made into fractions by simply putting them over 1. Um, here's you a few examples, 11 sevenths, uh, 0.2333 repeating 3. I couldn't make the repeating bar, but if, that, if you have a repeating pattern in a decimal, uh, that can be made into a positive rational fraction. Um, 2 and any other number that can be made again into a fraction would be included in this. So a few various forms of positive rational numbers are whole numbers. Again, decimals uh, could be decimals that are less than one, could even be decimals that are greater than one. Um, the key thing to the decimals though is they do have to terminate, meaning the decimal needs to end, can't just go on forever and ever, um, unless it has a repeating pattern that goes on forever and ever. That's the only exception. Um, of course, any form of fraction would count. So proper fractions, improper fractions, mixed numbers, all those would count. And finally, percents. Um, think about it, all percents are parts out of 100. So all percents can be converted into a fraction by simply placing the percent over 100. So those would all count. Here is a helpful chart to just... Um, remind you how you can change back and forth between the three different forms of fractions, decimals, and percentages, um, along with one example to show it. The first part shows how to change a fraction to a decimal by simply dividing the numerator by the denominator. So in this example, we're just doing 1 divided by 4. So you get 0 0.25. And then that can quickly be changed into a percentage by multiplying your decimal times 100. Remember, when we multiply by 100, that effectively moves the place value over two places, so 0 0.25 becomes 25%. When changing a decimal to a percentage, it's the same process we just discussed. You're going to multiply the decimal times 100, again, moving the, the place value over two places, and so 0 0.75 becomes 75%. If you need to change the decimal to a fraction, you need to read off the last digit's place value. So in this case, our last digit is a 5. Its place value is hundredths. So that means that this decimal would need to be placed over 100. Okay, so you have 75 hundredths. And then you simply reduce it to lowest terms. So this one will reduce down to 3 fourths. Finally, um, if we're changing a percentage to a fraction, since percentages are always part out of 100, this would be 40 out of 100, or 40 hundredths. Okay, so that would make the fraction, and then you can simplify it uh, to lowest terms, which will reduce down to two-fifths. If changing it to a decimal, uh, we're going to use the opposite of what we were doing before. Instead of multiplying by 100, we're now going to divide by 100, okay? because we're going from percent to decimal. And so when I divide by 100, instead of it shifting the place value uh, two places um, this direction, it's now going to go the opposite direction. So 0 0.40 is going to be the decimal for 40%. Now, you guys are responsible for being able to do multiplication division with any form of rational number as it, as it appears. You may have to do it with decimals, fractions, or percentages. Um, the good news is often we can change it into the form that we're most comfortable with, do the operation in that form, and then change it back to the form that's needed for our final answer. Um, I have chose to focus the remainder of this presentation on fractions, as it seems as that's the most difficult one to, to work with. So um, if you need additional assistance with percentages or decimals, um, simply let me know in the feedback, and I can work to put together a video for those as well. 
So here we're going to look at multiplying fractions together. When multiplying fractions, they do not need to have a common denominator like you do when you add or subtract fractions. Um, you simply multiply the fractions by multiplying straight across numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. And then if needed, you simplify the answer at the end. So in our first example, we had 2 fifths times 9 halves. So if we do the numerator times numerator, we'd have 2 times 9 is 18. And denominator times denominator, 5 times 2 gives us 10. Now this is an example of one that could be simplified because those are both even numbers. So we'll divide them both by 2, and so we get a simplified answer of 9 halves. Here's the second example. We had 3 fourths times 5 halves. So we're going to do 3 times 5 to give us 15, and we're going to do 4 times 2 to give us 8. Now in this example, you can't really reduce it because 15 and 8 do not have a common factor uh, between them. However, you could change this into a mixed number um, simply by dividing oops, let's back up one here uh, simply by dividing the numerator into the denominator so 8 would go into 15 just one time and then placing the remainder over the, the, the denominator so you'd have a remainder of 7 after you subtracted 8 from 15 and so this could be rewritten as 1 and 7 eighths okay Generally, we change our improper fractions to mixed numbers before you finish the problem. All right, um, this is an alternative way to multiplying fractions. Um, if it makes sense to you, great. It makes your life a little bit easier um, in the end. If it doesn't make sense to you, then just ignore this and just stick with what we just talked about. All right, when multiplying fractions, we can simplify the fractions and also simplify diagonally. Um, so in this example here, we had 2 fifths times 9 halves. And this, this is how we worked it, right? We multiplied straight across, got 18 tenths, divided it by 2, and got our simplified answer. Using this alternative method, you're actually going to look at um, the numerators and the denominators and ask yourself, can either one of the numerators simplify or reduce with either one of the denominators? So in our example here, the 2 in this fraction in its numerator can reduce with the 2 in this fraction's denominator. And so 2 can divide into both those one time, so it reduces down to 1 over 1. Now our problem would read 1 times 9 on top and 5 times 1 on bottom. Again, giving us the same result here of 9 fifths that we got before. Okay, so it's the same result. The only difference is in this example, we simplified before we multiplied, whereas in the original problem, we simplified after we multiplied. Okay, this can be done when multiplying any two sets of fractions. Again, you do not have to do it this way. This is just an alternative option if it makes sense to you what we did there. Okay, you can do it with any numerator versus any denominator that can simplify. All right, now let's look at multiplying mixed numbers. To multiply mixed numbers, convert them to improper fractions first. So here we got 3 and 2 fifths times 1 and 1 fourth. Now, to convert a mixed number into an improper fraction, you're going to multiply the denominator times the whole number and then add the numerator. Okay, the idea is the whole number represents how many holes you have to start with, right? So here we got three holes. Now, each of those three holes can be broken into five fifths. Agreed? So if I have five fifths, five fifths, five fifths, and then I still have the two fifths here, and I combine all those fifths together, I would have a grand total of 17 fifths, right? Five plus five plus five plus two makes 17. Okay? But the shortcut or the algorithm way of doing it is simply multiplying the denominator times the whole number and adding the numerator. You can see the same thing with one and one fourth. If I take my one whole and I break it into four fourths, and I add that to my one fourth, well, four fourths plus one fourth makes a total of five fourths. Okay, again, using the shortcut, we would just do four times one plus one. Now our problem is 17 fifths times five fourths. So at this point, we would use our um, method for multiplying fractions. Now, if I use that alternative method we talked about earlier, um, I'd Reduce the 5 in this numerator with the 5 in this denominator, because 5 can go into each of those one time. Then it makes the multiplication a little bit easier. Now it's just 17 times 1, and 1 times 4. 
Again, you wouldn't have had to have done it that way. You could have done 17 times 5 and 5 times 4 and then reduced at the end. But this saves you the trouble of having to reduce later. So we get 17 fourths. Okay, this is just a reminder of the sign rules. Um, here we're just looking at positive times positive, so we know the result will be positive. Um, if you end up working a problem that does have a negative, remember that a negative times negative would equal a positive. And then if you have different signs, so one number is positive, one number is negative, you end up with a negative result. That won't be the case for what we're doing here in this uh, particular learning lesson objective, but you are required to be able to work with positive and negative numbers as well. So here's a quick example. 3 eighths times negative 2 fifths. You got a positive times a negative. So you end up with a negative 6 fortieths. Okay, of course you can simplify that by dividing both of them by 2. So you wind up with negative 3 twentieths. Here's one last example. If you had negative 3 tenths times negative 1 six, and you have negative times negative, so it's positive. So you get positive 3 sixtieths. Again, those are both divisible by 3, so you simplify, get 1 twentieth. All right, so now let's look at dividing fractions. When dividing fractions, they do not need to have a common denominator, just like when multiplying fractions. It's not required. To divide two fractions, change the operation to multiplication and take the reciprocal of the second fraction. So basically, you're flipping over the second fraction. Um, I like to think of this as keep change flip. Sorry about the typo there. Let's get rid of that. Keep change flip. All right, so basically, you put your K over the first fraction, your C goes over the division sign, and your F goes over the second fraction. So you keep the two fifths the same, change your division to multiplication, and you flip over the second fraction. It's like multiplying by the reciprocal is what that's saying. Okay, see, we're talking about changing from division to multiplication and flipping this one. All right, so to finish the problem, once you've changed it, okay, then it's just a regular multiplication problem like we were doing before. Multiply the numerators together, 2 times 2 is 4, and 5 times 9 is 45. Okay, that was all there was to dividing fractions. Uh, it really is the same as multiplying fractions, except for the very first step of key change flip. Um, so to conclude this presentation, I've given you a site here that I found online. Um, this site has about 10 or so uh, different real-world scenario problems that involve rational numbers. And so uh, what's great about them is that it provides you the problem, and then it provides you a solution to the problem. So I would encourage you or challenge you to go through and read the problem. Try to work it yourself. Try not to look at the answer at first. Um, see what you can come up with, and then you can look at the process that they went through to answer that question and see if it follows what you did and see if you get the same results. Okay? Um, so it's just a great source where you can kind of practice what we just looked at in this presentation and see if you can apply it to real-world problems. All right. Thank you for your time.